Hi guys, it's Troy at The Full Setup here, back for another video, and today I have for you my unboxing of my Paylet GeForce GTX 1060 Super Jet Stream. Now, I will just give a few final thoughts on this at the end of the video as well, but I wanted to just sort of get straight to the unboxing in this. Now, the GeForce GTX 1060 is one of the latest NVIDIA graphics cards running on the Pascal architecture. It's running on a GP106 chipset, which is basically a cut in half 104, which is found in the 1080, um, and and they were launching partner cards from day one which is absolutely fantastic so this comes with a factory overclock um, of 1620 megahertz for the base clock and a boost of 1847 um, but I am going to overclock this to have a boost of about 2100 it's really easy to do on this card and it has an amazing 120 watt TDP as well it also features six gigabytes of GDDR5 um, that's running at 8000 megahertz um, with 192 uh, megabit bus as well so that should give you about four and a half teraflops and it's got 1280 CUDA cores so that's enough chatting let's have a look at the box you can see it's massive I can't really get it that much in shot but other things other than super jet stream we've got it's VR ready as well but I don't really plan to be using this for VR on the side again we just got the payload the jet stream as well and the GTX 1060 um, what have we got on this part Let's have a look just some all the general things that you're going to have with it general supported stuff so we all know about the g-sync and the gpu boost but also we've got the vulcan api as well there's also support for anzil and then it's just got some oh i'm holding it up a bit too much and then it's also just got some basic stuff as well like the pci express it uses a six pin um that we've got the 400 minimum watt power supply as well so you're not going to need to upgrade a power supply generally for this um and then just a few other bits and bobs as well on that and again to this side we just have the paylet geforce gtx 1060 and again on the top now on the back down here we just have some basic sort of specs in different languages um, and then we have all just basically a picture of this which I don't really want to show for too long but it's got dual fans, um, we've got a honeycomb bracket on the back, RGB lighting, dual BIOS, all these things we're going to show you in a minute. Um, so it's great, I'm really happy with this, I knew I slated the RX 480 a bit but I just really didn't like having a reference model from day one. So let's have a look inside the box. Um... Just some foam. There's the graphics card, which I'm going to put to one side. We'll take a look at that in a minute, and we'll have a bit of a zoom in on that. What else is inside the box? You see, there appears to be some cables here. Uh, we have, just for any of you old school people that don't have a PCI on your power supply, there is a Molex to 6 pin. Not that I need that, but I'm going to keep that because it was, comes in useful sometimes. Having that cable and what else is in the box okay so we've got no other adapters with it as well no adapters we've just got the manual as well and then we've got the graphics disc and the utilities as well because you need the utility for the rgb lighting i'm gonna have to download all this from the website and i always download the latest nvidia web uh, drivers anyway so let's have a look at the card do you want a closer look? I think we need a closer look at this, don't we? So here is the graphics card. Now, instantly, one thing I'm noticing, it's got this nice silver and black finish, but one thing I'm noticing is that it's quite heavily scratched. I'm not too happy about that. It doesn't look like there's a sticker over it as well. I'm not too keen about that. I might leave a bit of bad feedback for that. But other than that, it's got this nice, it's a black plastic, and then you've got silver metal. This looks like it unscrews as well, so if you want to do a paint mod, you can. Then we've got the dual 90 millimeter fans which i think only spin up at about 50 or 60 that's what most of them do now um, and as you can see it comes out a bit further than the slot so for anyone in a tight case i will do a measurement for you and it is about i don't know should we do a measure to, i'll do a measure to the end of the pci slot there which is about 140 14 centimeters to the pci slot it's again, it's about 125, and then just this actual cooler is um, 100, 110, so 11 centimeters wide. And um, while I'm here, I'll do the length as well, which is 24.5 centimeters. So that should fit in most cases. Right, let's look around the rest of it. So here we go again. Let's see, this is just plastic, but this bit here, the pallet, this is where it lights up all with RGB lighting, and we've got a six pin power. There will be boards coming out with an eight pin, but even with this, I've already seen the overclocks on this, and you can fully overclock them on the six pin, so don't worry about that. 
um, too much but yeah it is a bit cheaper plastic finish now this card retails for 270 pounds so it's a bit more of a premium it's in the middle of the range of the 1060s your strixes and your g1s cost about 300 pounds so and for that extra that i pay as well because the regular one's about 240 i'm also getting a back plate with this that's what you will get with it no design on it would have been nice to see and obviously when i find out that it's working i'm going to remove all these little stickers because they're everywhere then we've got the chip there and if you can just see here closely we have a dual bios um, and on the back here, I remember reading this on a review, they're all different sort of power pins and stuff. I don't know what you use those for. If anybody knows what it's those for, please comment for other people to know about. And, <coughs> oh, sorry, I had to cough there. So now we are around the business end where we're gonna output to all our monitors and we've got a dual link GVI, which I'm super happy about because I didn't have that on my RX 480. Um, display port 1.4s, I think all three of them are 1.4. That is the HDMI's in the middle, so maybe one's 1.4 and the two might be somewhere else. Um, and as for the HDMI, that's a 2.0B um, HDMI. So yeah, all over and all, it looks really nice. Oh, forgot to mention, this is what you might notice no sli collector and the width of this five centimeters that's a that's a two and a half slot i know that would have been a problem um before for many people you wouldn't buy it because of sli but this card does not feature sli so there we go so there's the unboxing of the graphics card and I think it looks absolutely fantastic. So just a few little final thoughts and things that I want to say. One's in um, regards to benchmarks and what I'm going to use to benchmark it. But the first thing I want to talk about is just the general price of it and is this the graphics card for you? Now, this is a slight issue and I know I've been ranting about it a bit and some of you totally agree and other people are like, you're an idiot and that's fine. Like We're all entitled to our own opinions. But... On Steam, right, the GTX 970 is the most popular graphics card. We know this, right? And there's a reason for it, because that card was absolutely fantastic. It was a brilliant graphics card. But that was a pretty high-selling graphics card, to be honest. And that then, because everyone's favourite card and a card that's most being used, that makes that a mainstream product, technically. Yeah, mainstream product. So now, both these, both the graphics card companies, well, AMD and NVIDIA, have gone, ah, so these guys are happy to pay... 270 275 300 pounds for a graphics card for their computer every two years well we'll market that as the mainstream product and make you think like you're getting an absolutely fantastic deal and the new cards are great but they're just a little bit more expensive to me a mainstream product is 200 pounds and under you know between 150 and 200 pounds so that's that's the price it should be at and that's just about the RX 480 with the four gigabyte um, Sapphire Nitro that's coming out. It's going to be £199 in the UK for the four gigabyte version, which will be absolutely fine for 1080p. There's no point in having the eight gig version if you're gaming at 1080p. There's literally hardly any difference. Again, we've got the RX 470, which is going to be slightly cheaper. You'll probably get the eight gig for the £200 mark. So if you did want that extra memory for certain games, you can have it. But that's more to me as a mainstream product and hopefully the GTX 1050 will be as well but that's nothing to take away from the 1060 and the RX 480 they're brilliant cards I just think they're a little bit too expensive for some people so benchmarking how am I going to benchmark this product well firstly I'm going to be benchmarking it the videos that you if you want to see them please go over the channel they'll be out over the next few weeks is my i5 4690k and this build I built mostly second hand I bought the processor and the motherboard for 180 pounds and if you want to see that video go and have a look after I'm done with that I'm going to um, benchmark on my RX um, my RX 480, sorry, so many model numbers on my 880K, which I have sat beside me here. It's sort of in pieces at the moment, but I have it fully working again. And this is one thing I want to say. Now, I did a lot of videos on the RX 480 with the 880K, and obviously you're going to compare them to the 1060, and there's going to be probably a bigger gap than there ought to be. And I want you to take those with a pinch of salt, because at the time my 880K was in a bit of a sorry state. For some reason, it would not overclock. It was only giving me stock clock speeds. Um, the temps were running pretty high as well. I don't know why they were running so high. Um, and also I was having to use with it being AMD and not having shadow play. I was also having to use Bandicam quite a bit to record certain games because play TV just sucks. God, I'm so happy to be back with shadow play. So yeah, take those with a pinch of salt and all the 1060 ones are going to be overclocked at 4.6 gigahertz. Um, I've managed to fix it. I've just put some new thermal paste on um, and given it BIOS update and it's working fine. So there we go. Enough of me chatting. That's where we're going with the channel. Always like to put that at the end of my video. And if you like these videos, please hit the like button down below and please subscribe as well. Thank you.